This is Alex Migos, a name synonymous with pushing the limits of what's possible in the world of climbing. But currently, he might be in a crippling plateau. On one hand, he's a machine. On the other hand, also just human. In this video, we will take a journey through the life and milestones of Alex Migos' climbing career. What he does physically to break through the limits of human climbing potential, discover what he did in order to send his masterpiece route, and how he intends to break through his recent halts in progress. There's no bad conditions. There's only weakness. Alex Migos was born and raised in Erlangen, Germany, where he first discovered his passion for climbing at the age of eight. It was a hobby that would soon become a lifelong obsession. One day, this little guy came in directly with his climbing shoes on, huge ones. This was the beginning. Yeah, step by step, he, he climbed harder and harder and harder and now you would assume Alex Migos had this amazing physical body, and he does. But little did you know, he only has the height of 5 foot 8 inches and an ape index of 0. Alex Migos is perfectly average, yet still manages to train himself a body to climb at the elite level. His fast progression early on caught the attention of the climbing community as he quickly became known as an ace as a prodigy. At the age of 14, Alex made his competition debut and it was clear that he was a force to be reckoned with. In 2011, at the age of 17, Alex became the youngest climber to win the German national championships in lead climbing. But Alex's true passion was always the outdoors. He sent Action Direct, the world's first 9A, in just two hours. In 2012, he made history by becoming the first climber to on-site 9A. This achievement sent shockwaves through the climbing world and solidified Alex's place as one of the best climbers in the world. In an interview, Alex Migos said, In truth, my plans was to try La Rambla, but since I didn't know the line precisely and I didn't have a guidebook, I decided to give Estado Critico a go. I didn't really plan on on-siting it, I simply just wanted to see how high I could climb and luckily I managed to reach the top. In 2018, Alex Migos set another milestone in climbing history by becoming the first person to send a Perfecto Mundo 9B+. This climb was widely considered to be one of the hardest climbing routes in the world at that time and it took Alex a year of intense effort to complete it. Adam Ondra is also attempting Perfecto Mundo 9B+, without success quite yet. It's the only 9B plus that Andra hasn't sent. Perfecto Mundo was just a stepping stone to what might just be considered the hardest long-term project that Alex would tackle. For Alex Migos, the path to climbing glory is not without its share of obstacles and challenges. One of the most formidable hurdles he had to overcome was a shoulder injury that forced him to take a hiatus from climbing. It was a trying time for Alex as he had to adapt his climbing technique to avoid aggravating his injury. But true to his character, he met this challenge head on and it became a test to his mental fortitude and determination. In the end, he emerged from this experience not just as a better climber but as a stronger, more resilient person. Fun fact, he still competed in the CWIF despite his injury. It's a first class competition in the United Kingdom and he easily cruised to victory. 
When it comes to conquering the vertical world, Alex Migos is a master of discipline and dedication. He pushes his limits through a calculated regimen that blends indoor and outdoor training, sculpting both his strength and endurance to perfection, all while fine-tuning his technical skills. He is constantly seeking to improve, working closely with a coach to craft a personalized training plan that is tailored to his unique strengths and weaknesses. But all that training is for nothing if he doesn't wear this secret equipment. So, I like the color yellow and I like carrots. So these ones online and I really like them so I ordered three of those and each one of them I've probably climbed a thousand eight A's and harder. Because everybody says you can't combine different patterns, so I said, well, I can combine different patterns, and there we go. So normally I can combine every shorts with every shirt. I as well don't give a shit, to be honest, whether it matches or not. Oh my god, I look good. <laughs> Alex Migos Jesus. also is just capable of pulling <laughs> so damn hard. So <laughs> you need to watch this. Uh, so that is like 72.94 kilograms in your left hand. That's crazy. Uh, the left one is weak though. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> uh, the left one always needs more warm up than the right one, so. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, it's crazy. Pretty much the same. <laughs> Pretty much the same. Mine was 51, yours is 72. So, yeah, I can pull 20 kilos more, but I'm 5 kilos lighter. Yeah. So, I can pull 25 kilos more. I think this might explain why you can climb 9A, 9A+, 9B, and I cannot. Maybe. <laughs> so there's two options. You have to get stronger. Mm -hmm. oh, that's actually the only option, huh? Alex Migos uses a variety of climbing shoe models over the years, but he seems to prefer shoes that are precise, sensitive, and provide excellent edging support. He's been seen using shoes from Tanaya, and his shoe size is about 42 EU, which is 8.5 US. I always felt that Tanaya was the one shoe that fitted my foot perfectly and that I could really climb confident in. So um, since then, I'm, I'm super, with, super happy with them and just really enjoy climbing with Tanayas. What was the shoe you used for your hardest ever climb? Do you, do you remember? Um, it is either the Ati or the Ati. While training to achieve his lifelong project, he has become the biggest advocate for board climbing. <laughs> <laughs> he is well known for setting challenging routes on both the moon board and kill the boards. Alex even has a dedicated board account for Instagram. All this training throughout his life was going to culminate to the biggest challenge of his climbing career so far. Bibliography. Now, bibliography was a multi-year pursuit for Alex, a test of patience and perseverance at the world-renowned Seuss area in France. The name pays homage to a biography, a route that's just a few meters to the left, which held a distinction of being the first 9A plus in the world. First climb by Chris Sharma. In 2014, Alex famously sent biography on his third try. Bibliography it's a 35 meter overhang, which bears resemblance in style similar to the other routes on the same rock. Ethan Pringle bolted the route in 2009 and it presents as a sustained hard overhang with crimps and big, big moves. For Alex to be projecting a route for multiple years suggested a grade of 9C and possibly a split between 9B plus 9C. The only other 9C is Silence, completed by Adam Ondra in 2017 and has yet to see any other ascent. Alex Migos at the time recommended Root to be 9C. With approximately 60 climbing days over the past three years, bibliography has been by far my longest project to date, says Alex Migos. I know there are many speculations about the grade and I think grades are very subjective. My personal suggestion for this grade is 9C, considering the fact that Perfecto Mundo, which is 9B+, took Alex Migos 16 days of effort Alex Migo says that bibliography, with around 60 days and more specific training, bibliography felt a lot harder. However, his hopes were dashed when Stefano Gusoffi, another pro league climber, repeated bibliography and suggested a grade of 9B plus instead of 9C. 
Alex Migos replied with, I underestimated how much of a difference it makes to know if you have the right beta. On bibliography, I thought I had a good beta until I came back a season later to completely change it again. It happened so many times. So in the end, I probably spent the bigger part of the 60 days trying to figure out the beta, changing it again, and not being sure that I can do it. I became more and more convinced that it had to be harder than anything I had ever done before. Alex Mingos also, during that time, did not seem to establish very good results in the IFSC climbing competitions. He consistently made semi-finals, and, but he was never able to break through the finals like his other compatriots like Adam Mondra and Jakob Schubert. I believe the setting in modern competitions just doesn't really suit Alex Mingos' style. Uh, he struggled to keep up. But yeah, he had to temporarily abandon like you know his outdoor climbs. Like nobody could balance both. Like almost two different types of climbing. However, he's one of the only few climbers that is able to do both at the most elite level. And that is very respectable. I recently learned to accept failure more than I did in the past because I realized that climbing hard is probably more than 99% of the time failing just to succeed one time. Currently, Alex Migos is publishing videos on his YouTube channel showing more of his natural playfulness. Despite being in a plateau, Alex Migos looks healthier, stronger, and actually looks happier than before. For someone who has shattered the limits of human capabilities multiple times, it's reasonable to step back and pivot onto new ventures. His focus has shifted to giving back to the community as a leader and pioneer of a light-hearted attitude and positive approach to climbing and training. His achievements on and off the rock are a testament to the heights that can be achieved when we push ourselves beyond our limits. His humility and willingness to share his knowledge and experience are a reminder that climbing is not just about individual success, but about community and shared experiences. His struggles and setbacks show the path to greatness isn't easy, but with grit and perseverance, we can overcome the challenges that stand in our way. We can learn from his example and strive to become the best versions of ourselves, both on the rock and in real life. Alex Migos is a true legend of the sport and his story will continue to inspire climbing enthusiasts for years to come. <laughs> that was sketchy. <laughs>